My problem with the pre-construction industry, specifically here in the city of Toronto, I've been thinking about making this video for quite a few months actually. Um, but I want to make sure that when I was putting it out, my thoughts were actually well thought out because I just want to come in here and say, oh, pre-construction is not a good investment. And I've been telling you this for the last four or five years. I want to come here and break down kind of where we're at in today's market. And to be very clear, uh, if you've come here to watch a video of me bashing a certain segment of our industry, that is not what this is going to be. I just want to share some of the things that I've been thinking about and some of the discussions that I have been having kind of behind the scenes um, with a lot of people that did invest into this segment of the industry over the past few years. There are also many amazing resources and a lot of people that sell pre-construction that are phenomenal at what they do, specifically here on YouTube. Jordan from Precondo is the guy. Um, he knows a lot of what's going on and I like what he does because he breaks projects down and will tell you what is good, what is not good, and the fact that you should never be buying a pre-construction condo just for the intention of assigning it on closing. All right, now that I've got that out of the way so you know where I'm coming from here, thank you for being here and watching this video. My name is Tom Story. I run a real estate team here in the city of Toronto. And if you get any value from this video, all I ask is you hit that like button and subscribe to our growing community. Also, if you'd like to book an appointment with me, you can go into the first link in the description. You can book a buyer call, a seller call, or a discovery call to chat about the market. The team that I run here in the city of Toronto focuses on relationships, not transactions. We are one of the only trusted agents of Scott McGillivray, which is a partnership I'm excited to share more about shortly. But let's get into what this video is about. So my main problem with the pre-construction industry right now isn't the industry as a whole because they are selling a product that we need, right? We do need more housing. You can make arguments whether who's buying it is who we need to be buying it, but I've already done other videos on that. It's the assignment portion of this. So historically, basically going up to like 2016, if you bought a pre-construction condo in the city of Toronto from around the year 2000 to 2016, and you sold it on closing, you made a good amount of money. Like there was a lot of data to back up the fact that these were great investments. But we also have to discuss the fact that when you were buying them in the year 2000, 2005 or 2010, you were getting them for a discount compared to their counterpart, which was a resale condo, which is available for purchase today. So I think a lot of newer investors that have gotten into this segment of the industry since 2016, they heard stories about their cousin or their uncle or their parents or their friend that bought a condo 10 years ago, waited till it was finished, then flipped it, made $400,000 and it was great. And let's be honest, there were people that got into the pre-construction industry early on that made legitimately life-changing money by buying 5, 10, 15 of these condo units. And now they basically don't have to work a regular job because the cash flow they have built over time has been significant. But here's what's happening now because I'm getting these calls literally on a weekly basis. Someone that says, hey, Tom, you know, I bought a condo two years ago. I paid fourteen to $1,600 a square foot for it in downtown Toronto. Uh, which is right along the lines of what things were selling for during that period of time for the top projects, well-located projects in the city. You know, interest rates have gone up significantly since then. You know, the closing is going to come up in about six months to a year. And honestly, like maybe I can close on it now with the new rates, but I'd like to just sell it. We've done several assignment sales over the years, typically representing buyers that are buying the assignments. And it's a bit more paperwork and a lot more lawyers being involved. But, you know, there are transactions that happen all the time, but you're buying that piece of paper. But the reality in today's market is that the assignment market is dead. There is not a lot going on. Maybe it has a bit of a heartbeat, but the only people wanting to buy assignments right now are buying at prices that were lower than the original purchaser paid maybe four or five years ago. So I guess we can think about this in two different ways, right? Uh, well, who were the purchasers and what percentage of these purchasers are actually going to be in a position that they can no longer close on these properties? And the truth is, I don't know what the answer to that question is. Only the developers would know the answer to the question based on the conversations they're having with people right now. I think if you were a long term real estate investor, there was nothing wrong with buying pre-construction condos even recently because you're thinking way down the road. You have that 10 year perspective where you're not really worried if you're going to be negative cash flow for a little bit of time here. You're just getting into a product that is new and obviously things that are new typically cost more. The people that are worried about are the people that were speculating. And you can call them speculators or people that are 
definitely supposed to be hurt when the market goes bad, but some of them were literally just trying to get ahead in life, right? So let's let's be fair on both sides here. And the people that bought these condos to live in, and actually they're going to be the ones moving into them, I mean, I don't think they should be too worried right now because if you bought with at least a five-year perspective, you're probably going to be okay. But we have to acknowledge the fact that new construction condos are at a 30 to 40% premium compared to resale right now. And that if you are buying them, you have to think for a long time. The other thing is that it's not really being reported on. Like there's been a few news articles about assignment sales and what's going on, but most of this is happening behind the scenes in Facebook groups and WhatsApp messaging groups and things like that. That's where these units are trading with each other. You're not gonna see monthly reports on how many assignment properties sold or how many new assignment listings there were because for the most part other than in some circumstances where the building is almost being registered and the developer allows assignments on mls these properties are not on realtor.ca if you've watched my channel for a while or maybe you've checked out the podcast channel you know i invested in pre-construction in 2018 and i'm very very happy with my purchase but that's because i was a long-term real estate investor i wasn't just someone that was going to buy it with the intention of flipping it so hopefully what this will teach us as investors in the Canadian real estate market is that short term prices do not always go up. Historically, at least for the last 45 years, yeah, prices do go up. There's no arguing that. We can see it in the data. Short term could even mean chunks of times as big as five to 10 years. Maybe I'm missing something here. And, and maybe you could even say, well, Tom, you mostly sell uh, you know resale condos, so you're biased on the other side. Maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. I'd, always, I'd love your opinion on this maybe below. But like, what am I missing here? Why do people want pre-construction so bad? Is it just because of the staggered deposit? Is it just because it's new? Is it because of the historical data that prices have done so well that you just think it's an automatic way to make money? I'd love to know if you got into this situation, why did you buy a pre-construction condo? Because if a client reaches out to us and they're specifically gung-ho on a specific pre-construction project, we'll go over all the pros and cons. And if it looks good, we'll sell it to them. I have no issues with that. Like if it's a good project in a good area at a price point that makes sense and they've got the perspective of living there for a little while. So I think it's totally fine. And if we do look at where the rental stock and inventory is coming from, the developers are the ones that are giving it to us. And I can't even really be mad at them with the prices that they are charging based on what they had to pay for land. And really the city of Toronto is gouging them in development fees. Like I talked about Jordan at the beginning of this video, he's got some great videos on how much the city of Toronto is charging these developers where it's like that cost is just being passed along to the consumers. But yes, we do need more inventory and these developers are building this new inventory, but it's not really affordable inventory. In fact, it's much more expensive than the inventory that's already on the market. All right, last thing I gotta say about this here, uh, and this is the thing that kind of bugs me a little bit, is some real estate agents will just push every single pre-con project and tell you it is the best thing ever. That is a load of crap. There are some really, really good projects and there are some really, really, well, let's call them not so good projects. And full transparency, real estate agents make more money selling pre-construction than they do selling resale. The percentage of the sale is much higher on pre-construction than it is resale. And right now, as a real estate agent in a market that is slower than it has previously been, I'm getting emails on the daily from developers saying, hey, we have more incentives for you. For me, they want to pay me more money to get you to buy that property where it should just be we'll cut the price but they will do everything they possibly can to not cut that price hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully what i said made sense just kind of want to come on here and chat with you about something that i've been thinking about for you know quite a bit of time recently and i'd love to know what you think in the comments below thank you so much for watching this video my name is tom story and remember home is where your story begins